Imagine this. You are hiking at the height of more than 2,000 meters. It has been seven hours since you started your hike. You are exhausted. You are following a path which is very narrow and dangerous. Every step that you take forward, you think twice before that. Because one single mistake could mean the difference between life and death. Suddenly you come across a patch of the path which is even narrower and dangerous than the one before. Start to panic. You're sweating, you're shaking, you're unable to take a step forward. Even though you know that there is no going back and the only logical thing to do is to take that step forward. Mr. Contest Chair, my fellow Toastmasters, dear guests, that is exactly what happened to me in June of 2014 when I dared to go to Polish Tatra Mountains for the very first time in my life. <laughs> <laughs> me and few of my friends, we started our hiking at 6 a.m. in the morning, all full of energy. We had planned about eight hours of hike. It was a beautiful sunny day. The views were absolutely amazing. Magnificent mountains, shimmering lakes, beautiful landscapes. We had a lot of fun while climbing our first peak. I was so full of energy that I was annoying the hell out of my friends by the amount of energy I had. Come on guys, come on, let's go! <laughs> they did not like me on that day. We reached our first peak about one hour later than we had expected. But we thought, okay, we started early enough, we will still make it. And then my friend, Ola, who had planned the whole hike, came to me and said, Zan, the next part of our journey is very dangerous. So please be careful. And I said to her, please. Have you just seen me how I came up? These are small mountains. I will do just fine. Let's go. And so we started. But as we approached this next peak, I realized that the path is becoming quite steep. On top of that, even though it was beginning of June, there was still snow on everywhere. And under high temperature, it was melting fast, making everything slippery. And on that dangerous path, they had put chains on the side so you could walk with some support. As we were walking, we came across a stretch of the path which was completely covered in melting ice. And at the end of that section, there was a curve behind which you couldn't see where the path is leading. I saw three of my friends go one by one, very carefully, crossing that icy patch and then vanishing behind that curve. And I thought to myself, I can do the same. So I grabbed those chains <coughs> and very slowly, very carefully, I started to walk. Both my feet slipped at the same time. I was shocked. My heart was beating like a hammer. I had no idea what had happened. The only reason I didn't fall was because I was still holding those chains. Fortunately, there were a couple of people who saw me like that and helped me back on my feet and helped me to cross that icy patch. When I finally met my friends, I said to them, guys, I just had a near-death experience. And they didn't believe me. How can you have a near-death experience? We just came on the same path. It's so simple and easy. <laughs> and I couldn't believe how my friends cannot understand what a traumatic experience I just had and how shaken <laughs> up I am. Instead, Ola said to me, Zan, please stop <coughs> complaining. We are already behind schedule. Just follow us. So we began again. But this time, I was too nervous. So before taking a single step forward, can I put my foot there? Is it safe? Will I fall? OK. Every step like that, which meant that all my friends were far ahead of me, and I was falling behind. And this is when I reached that path where I thought to myself that if I will put my foot one step forward, I will fall and I will die. And I started to panic. 
I was holding that cliff, not moving, shaking, sweating, unable to move forward, and absolutely not listening to my friends who were shouting from down there, come on Zen, you can do it, we just crossed that path, just take a step forward. I didn't move, I was just standing there all alone. And then my friend Sami came back up that path. He had this kindest smile on his face. He approached me and he extended his hand and said, Zen, hold my hand. I will help you to cross this path. I took his hand and we both crossed that and we still hiked for a few more hours, but after that I had no more panic attacks. Now, there are a few things that I learned from this whole hiking experience, but there is one thing that I would like to emphasize. Just like how after a traumatic experience, I was unable to take a simple step forward, the same can happen to us in real life. And in those moments, when we are stuck and we are panicked, it's not a logical argument or a rational thought that helps us to take that step forward. But instead, it's a loved one, a friend, or a close person coming to us and saying, hold my hand. I will help you to take this step. And who knows? Maybe that single step and that helping hand could mean a new beginning for us in our lives. Thank you.